Okay, let's do our warm ups and get a little core work, maybe a little hip work in today. So shoulders back and down, round to the ceiling. Lift your kneecaps, kind of tighten the front of your thighs, get that back of your legs stretching a little bit. Core activated, shoulders back and down, crown reaching to the ceiling. And just take a moment focusing inward, getting that yoga perspective, noticing how you're responding. And then inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch those fingertips way out, shoulders still down. Hands to your heart, bring them back a little bit with those elbows opening your chest. Inhale, heart or shoulders down and hands to the front. Exhale, hands behind you. Just clasp the fingers gently and push them down as you lift your heart. Stretch your head back, but remember, don't lift your chin. Exhale, pivot at your hips, hands up, head down, spread your toes, and just deepen into that. Stretch along the back of your body. Take a moment breathing. You can move your chin around, get the neck releasing, shoulders relaxing, hands toward your head. Spread those toes out, no gripping. And then start at the bottom of your spine, wind your way all the way back up and into an upper body back bend. Stretch your head back and your shoulders down. Take a moment lifting your heart, just breathing. And then inhale upright, release your arms. Feel that body beginning to warm up a little bit. And again, inhale, arms to shoulder level, hands to your chest, elbows back, stretch to the front, shoulders down, and then clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. So shift the fingers in one position over and lift your heart, stretch into the back bend as deeply as you like, and then exhale, pivoting over. Come all the way down as far as you feel right for you today. And keep your knees straight or slightly bend them and just relax. And then knees bending slightly. Lift the ribs, drop the sitting bones, or wind your way all the way back into the back bend. Again, heart high, shoulders down. Stretch the head slightly back and don't forget to breathe. Inhale upright and release into mountain pose, feeling that stimulation through your spine. So forward bends and backward bends. Next, we'll do the lateral side to side motion. So bring your arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Pass them just gently clasping, bring your arms back by your ears. Stretch those fingertips up and keep your body facing the front. Lean over to the side. Push the foot you're leaning away from down a little bit more and get those ribs stretching apart and that spine moving sideways. Take a breath, just relax and deepen. And then inhale back up and switch your other hand to the front. Arms again by your ears, everything nice and straight and lean, no twist over to the opposite side. Push the foot down and the hands away, head out as you stretch through the ribs. Feel that other side contract. And then again, inhale upright and release. Feel those shoulders, maybe circle them around and release. So really stretch the spine apart now so we can twist. You want to have room between the bones to move. Arms out, palms up. Hands above your shoulders, clasp your elbows, spread your toes, stretch your spine apart, and exhale to the twist. Take a breath and exhale over in the twist. Keep your weight as much on both feet as you can. Keep your arms by your ears and just deepen that side, stretching into that twist. Take a moment and breathe. Keep the weight on both feet as much as you can as you inhale back up and lift your heart, coming into that upper body for the back bend. Remember when you're in the twist, especially don't overdo that low back. Shoulders are down, elbows back. Just look slightly up, but not too much. You don't want to crunch your neck. And then inhale up 
Exhale around to the center and switch your arms around to balance it out. And again, stretch the spine apart and twist to the other side. Another breath and exhale over. And just take a moment there, breathing, lifting the sitting bones, keeping the weight on both sides evenly and relaxing. Feel the stretch along the back and then inhale, coming up. And again, upper body back bend, not overworking the lower back while you're twisted. Chest high, shoulders down, elbows back. Just lengthen through your spine while you're in the back bend. And then inhale up, exhale around to the center. Bring your arms up and extend through the fingertips. Extended mountain, just stretching your whole body nice and straight. Pivot at your hips, exhale coming to the front. And stretch it out, and then just drop in a rag up. Lift the sitting bones. Let that whole back of your body get a good stretch, maybe a little deeper with your hands behind your legs to pull in, if you like. And then arms back to the front, and one more roll up, coming all the way back into mountain pose. So again, just allow those shoulders to release a little bit, circle them around maybe, and relax. Feel your core, get it activated. Focus on your ribs. You can put your fingertips there if you like, and we're just gonna move the ribs around. So don't move your shoulders or your hips too much, just move around through that midsection. And then move it the other direction. See what that feels like. Take a few breaths. And release. So just a little more core activation there. And then bring your hands to your heart. We'll look at them as you bring them toward the ceiling, inhaling. A little back bend, pulling those thumbs back as you gaze at them. Lift your heart, stretch your spine. Exhale, pivot over, dropping into ragdoll. <clears throat> hands up under your knees, on your shins, halfway up, stretch. And then exhale, release, hands to the floor, bend your knees slightly, hands together, and to your heart. Release into mountain pose. And just feel a little more circulation. So we're going to step to the end of the mat, do a little hip opening. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, hands to your heart again. We'll do that. Stretch up and a little back bend as you gaze at your hands, lifting your heart, breathing in. Exhale, follow those hands all the way toward the floor, dropping into ragdoll, sliding up into that halfway up stretch, hands under your knees on your shins. Stretch and straighten everything. And then bend your knees slightly, hands to the floor. We're taking the right foot into a plank, into a lunge position. Knee above your ankle, pressing back through that heel behind you, hands under your shoulders. And we're gonna get this hip flexor on the right leg stretching a little more. So bring your knee down toward the floor. Pat if you need to, slide those toes back. Feel that stretch lengthening a little bit more and relax into it. Because when you relax the muscles, stretch more easily. Just take a moment there. Exhaling tension. And then tuck your toes under and lift your knee, not your hip. Come out to the base of your toes, that ball of your foot area. And then plank or press your hands down under your shoulders and step into plank. So get your body as straight as possible. Take a moment there. Feel that stretch. Press back through your heel, out through your crown. And keep those core activated muscles working to support that midsection. So don't let the hips sink on this one. We want to lift the hips, sitting bones a little bit if you're feeling like you're sagging in that midsection. Take a breath, push the heels and crown away, and then bend, lift your hips, Bend your knee, bring it toward your chest, and pull that foot forward right back under you. So again, ankle and knee lined up, spread through the toes, and then push forward back into ragdoll. Hands together, inhaling. Hands to your heart and toward the ceiling. 
and another little back bend, and exhale into mountain pose. So feel how different the one side feels from the other. So we're going to do the opposite side. I'm stepping to the other end of the mat. You don't need it to. So feet again hip width apart, hands to your heart, shoulders down. Look at your hands and again, raise them toward the ceiling and into a nice little back bend as much or as little as you like. Exhale, hands to your heart, pivoting over into ragdoll. Hands up under your knees, on your shins, stretch and straighten in that halfway up stretch. Bend your knees slightly, hands to the floor, fingertips or palms down. Remember, you can put books or blocks under there if you need to raise the floor. And then left foot stepping back into the lunge. So again, knee above your ankle. Remember, don't let it lean in or out, just right above that ankle for support. Knee dropping to the floor behind you. Again, pad if you need it. Slide those toes back and feel the stretch begin on that front of your hip on the left leg. Take a moment there, just breathing. Sink that hip straight down. And then putting your hands down, tuck the toes under, lift the knee, not the hip, pressing back through the heel, and bring that front foot back and again into a nice little straight line plank. So remember, heels, knees, hips, shoulders, everything lined up. Keep that core pulling up towards your spine, towards your heart, keeping that midsection from sinking down. Take a moment there, just breathing. And then again, we're going to bring that right foot forward this time, or left foot forward this time. So lift your hips, bring that foot up, and get it under your shoulder. So remember, if it takes... If it doesn't go all the way up, just bring your hand behind your heel, pull it up. And then again, sinking into that plank, that lunge position, relax and push forward into ragdoll. Hands together, inhaling, and again, bringing your body up, and another little back bend, exhaling into mountain pose. So again, feeling the front of your hips where we stretched it out a little bit more. Shoulders back and down. And once more, hands to your heart. Inhale, bringing them up. Another back bend because we love back bends. And as you exhale, come upright, bring your hands out into shoulder level position, palms toward the floor, pivoting forward. Come into that stretch halfway down and drop into ragdoll. Hands up on your shins, stretch and straighten, and exhale into ragdoll. And again, inhaling, hands to your heart and release. So we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to come to the end of the mat again. Hands to your heart. Inhaling, come on up, another back bend, and exhale over. Drop into ragdoll, slide up into that halfway up stretch. So remember, elbows, knees, and spine are straight here. You're looking down at the floor so that neck keeps stretching. Bend your knees, bring your hands down to the floor, and palms down, step back into plank. So, okay, we're in our plank. Remember, a little bit high with the hips if you need to. Don't let them sink to the floor as you're in plank. But now we're going to go into up dog. So slide the tops of your feet to the floor. And then sink your hips toward, but not to the floor. Shoulder, shoulder legs toward your waist, looking forward. And as you're in that position, keep your knees straight, lifting the kneecaps toward your thighs and the knees up off the floor. So this is up dog. And be a little bit intense in the lower back. If that's the case for you, you can bring your knees all the way to the floor and just go into a little cobra. Okay, so from here, we're gonna tuck the toes under again. And then lift the thinning bones up and pull your whole chest toward your legs. Sink your heels toward the floor, hip width apart. 
and your head toward your hand and come up into that down dog V-shaped position. So as much lifting through the sitting bones and pushing up and back as you can. Spread the palms, spread the fingers, get really connected, sink the heels, but they probably won't go all the way. And then bend one knee, right the other and push the heel toward the floor. A little stretch for the back of the legs. And then reverse it, do the other leg straight and bending the opposite knee. And then come up um, the toes a little bit more and then sink the heels on both legs, head toward your hands, sitting bones up, get that core working, supporting your spine. And then raise your heels, bend your knees, bring them all the way to the floor, slide the toes back, and come into your child's pose. So nice back bend here, just relaxing. Shoulders coming down, forehead toward the floor, and don't forget to breathe. And then inhaling, sit up and come into staff position. Legs straight out in front, press out through the heels, pull the toes back. Release through the hips, sitting bones slightly behind you. Keep the core always activated, supporting your spine. Shoulders back and down. Take a moment to stretch up through the crown. We're going to work the outsides of the hips now. So bring your right foot to the opposite thigh and let the knee come down toward the floor. Remember, you can pad a little extra to get a little pelvic tilt to help open that hip joint a little bit more or bring your leg over to the side. Keep the knee and toes up if you do. Take a moment and breathe. You can add the weight of your hands, but remember, no pressure. We want to relax through those muscles and let them release, letting that knee come down a little bit more if it wants to. Just releasing and relaxing through that hip joint area. And then foot and knee into your hands or wrap your arms around and pull it in. Stretch and straighten that spine. Move the hip back and forth. So a little rotating in the hip rotator, getting it releasing and relaxing and getting a little bit more warmed up in that fluid. If you love it, you can bring it higher or closer. Makes it more intense. So if you've already got enough, don't go there. And as it feels a little bit better, go ahead and release. Notice the difference on the two sides. So yeah, we got to bounce and do the other one. Foot up to your thigh, knee coming down on this side. Notice one side may be a lot tighter than the other. That's not unusual. Creatures of habit, we get those hips doing things habitually one way more than the other. In cars, on seated at tables and desks and things. So just allow your body to work out however it needs to. Knee up, toes up, whether the leg is over to the side or not. And again, you can put a little weight, but not pressure on the knee if you think that that's going to give it a little bit more incentive to kind of work down toward the floor. Relax, let it release. And as that gets a little bit easier, and of course, hold it on your own when you practice on your own. Bring the foot and knee into your hands or pull the leg in, wrapping your arms around. And again, rotate <clears throat> side to side, just getting that hip fluid warmed up a little bit more. Take a breath, just relaxing. And as it feels a little bit easier, you can do it more intensely or not. And then release. Feel how everything is a little bit more warmed up through that whole hip area. So we're going to come up onto our hands and knees and do our pain. So knees under the hips, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Spread those fingers out. Not going to be in this position very long. Get that core activated, supporting your low back. Stretch the sitting bones and crown away from each other. Bring your right knee between your hands. Sliding that left leg back, getting that hip flexor again, opening a little bit more. Right knee comes way over to the right side of the mat, and then pull that heel forward as much as it wants to go, 
as far as perpendicular to your body, if that works for you. Hands under your shoulders, chest forward, look slightly up, but remember, keep stretching the neck. And just sink evenly through the hips. If that's feeling good, you can stay there. If you want it a little easier, you can slide your forearms down to the floor and keep those hips evenly sinking in that chest and shoulder area, pushing slightly forward, crown slightly up. So a little bit of a back bend to get that hip flexor working. Notice that the knee out to the side, right leg is working that hip flexor. So either stay on your forearms for a few breaths or coming back up into the more intense hip sinking with the hands right under your shoulders. <laughs> Evenly bringing those hip bones down toward the floor and lifting the heart, stretch the back of the neck, keep breathing. <laughs> if you're still on your forearms, bring the hands back under your shoulders, push into them, bring your front knee back and your back knee back up into table position. And again, as you get there, <clears throat> Core activated, get that lower back supported. Spine straight, stretching, sitting bones and crown apart. Shoulder blades toward your waist. And of course, we're going to do the opposite. So bring your left knee between your hands. Slide your right leg back, get that hip starting to open through that right hip flexor. And left knee way over to the side. Bring that heel forward as far as it wants to go. And again, let those hips start sinking further toward the floor. Hands under your shoulders, chest forward. Kind of look straight to the front or slightly up, but not too much to crunch that neck. And again, just let those hips sink. Slide your hands forward if you want that slightly easier version, letting the hips release even further. Or stay up if you want a little bit more maximizing through that hip stretch, releasing those hip bones down evenly toward the floor. If this heel gets in the way, move it forward a little bit more if you can. Take a breath. Shoulder blades toward your waist, chest forward. And then if you're still on your forearms, bring those hands back under your shoulders. Push into your hands. Front knee back and back knee up, coming into table and then just sink back and come into child's pose for a little release through those hips. Take a breath, exhale and relax. And then inhale and sit up and again slide off into staff position, coming into Sitting bones behind you, pressing out through the heels, pulling those toes back. Feel those hips a little bit more used today. And we will do, oh, let's do another of Roxanne's favorites. So let's go into our diving dolphin. Right foot to the inner left thigh, knee out toward the side, and bring the left heel back near your hip, but not under it. So that left hip will be up a little bit. You want to stretch the spine apart and then turn your whole body toward the right knee, the first, first knee you bend. <clears throat> so a little twist and then a forward bend. So pull the ribs back, tuck the chin slightly and exhale down forehead toward your knee. And then rotate your face slightly forward. Remember, keep stretching the back of your neck as you inhale all the way up, looking to the sun and the sky. So you're the dolphin, just be your playful dolphin self, rounding, exhaling, diving under the water, inhaling, coming up, and opening your heart to the sun and the sky. Feel that whole spine working, breathing into it, just allowing your whole body to work through its range of motion with your breath. And then the next time you come upright, Stretch and exhale, turning back to the center and release your legs into mountain pose. Feel all that energy from that twist and motion. And of course, we're going to balance the body and dive our dolphin back 
along the shore the other way. So left foot to the inner thigh, knee going out to the side, get those sitting bones behind you, stretch up, exhale, bring that right heel near your hip. And again, knee as much toward the front as it works for you. If this doesn't go all the way, do it wherever it goes. Hip is slightly up so we can move into our twist. So really stretching the spine apart. Exhale and turn toward that first knee. Ribs go in, chin tucking under. Exhale and coming down. And then inhale and coming back up and lifting your heart. And again, keep stretching the back of your neck. Keep lengthening through the whole spine as you exhale, diving under. And as you inhale, coming up. And just allow your body again, moving through its range of motion, appreciating all the work your spine does for you and your breath. Just breathing with it, exhaling underwater, inhaling deep into the sun and the sky. Just let your dolphin enjoy its playful motion. And then the next time you come upright, pause at the top, exhale, turning back to the center, and release your legs to the center. Take a moment, just feeling all that energy. And then let's come into a cross-legged position. And being creatures of habit, remember, reverse your legs because otherwise we always do the same thing. We're going to do a bowing breath. So just straighten up your spine. And then as you exhale, bring your chin toward your throat center and begin winding your spine down as you exhale, pulling those ribs in and just coming as far as the floor and toward the floor as your exhalation brings you just a really slow exhalation. And then as you inhale, begin reversing that, coming back slowly up and inhaling all the way to the top. And then again, exhaling, bringing your chin towards your chest, slowly, slowly exhaling down, just focusing on the breath, letting the motion move as far as it wants to. And reversing, coming back up. And as you get to the top, <clears throat> stretch and straighten and lengthen through your spine. One more time, exhaling. Feel all those bones each one at a time moving into that forward position as you exhale in. And then moving back into the back. Bringing those shoulder blades back up, shoulders back into place, and head crown to the ceiling as you inhale. And then one final bowing position, exhaling, coming over. Inhaling, coming in. And as you pause at the top, just take a moment to release any tension. Bring your feet to the end of the mat. And use your core for support as you roll all the way onto your back. When they add to the back, just allow your body to soften and sink. Bring your hands out to T position for one final twist, just a brief bent knee one. <clears throat> Sitting bones toward your heels, heels in toward your hips. Press the back down, feet up off the floor, knees above your hips. Exhale, rolling the knees to one side, turning your head toward the opposite side. Shoulder, shoulder blades down. You can have your hands, palms up or down, whatever makes it easier. Keep those shoulders releasing. Knees going toward the floor for that lower back twist, head turning the opposite direction for the neck. And then hips, heels toward your hips, roll onto your back, straighten it out if you need to, and Again, knees above your hips, rolling the knees to the other side, turning your head again the opposite direction. Take a moment and breathe, just releasing into that twist, just letting that lower back relax as the knees come toward the floor. Neck area twist and turning. Keep those shoulders down for your middle back. Heels toward your hips, roll onto your back, bring your feet to the floor. And slide the leg back, 
coming into our final relaxation. Hands, palms up near your hips, slightly away from your sides. Let those shoulders release. Move your head side to side, let that neck release. Toes toward each other, and then just release. Feet hip width apart or so. And relax your whole body. Let it grow heavy. Sink into that surface beneath you. And just relax. As you exhale, just let the thoughts of your body release as your body softens and sinks. And allow any new thoughts coming to you to release as well. Remember, it's the job of your mind to produce thoughts. Just let them go without attention as you completely relax your mind as well as your body. Let the thoughts drift away as easily as your breath allowing your awareness to focus inward. Follow the breath in. Release the thoughts out. Just allow your awareness to find that peace deep within. Focus on the peace. Body at peace. Mind at peace. Entirely being peace. And keep relaxing as long as you have time. If it's time to return, getting ready for the rest of your day, just in drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you begin breathing more deeply, begin moving your body gently, however it feels right for you to do. Circle those ankles and knees, maybe move your hips around, shoulders. Just breathing more deeply, stretching more fully as you become ready. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, draw your heels toward your hips and your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, whatever feels good for you today for that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its work in yoga and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release that, add your feet to the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you to do. Thanks for joining me.